Hey everybody, what's up? It's Rob. I'm here with uh, Gray Norton uh, from the Polymer team, aka Nor Easter, if you are a Polymon fan. Uh, we're using our inside voices a little bit because we are in the Code Lab Overflow room where folks are, are working hard on some Polymer uh, Code Labs. So, Gray, you just got done talking about uh, data flow in Polymer applications. Uh, I know that it is a very important topic. A lot of developers ask us about that all the time. And so, for, for folks watching who maybe haven't seen your talk yet, is there a way that you can kind of like distill some of the, the key uh, points from your talk down for, for them? You know, we do get a lot of questions. I mean, this is a big thing, especially as more and more developers are building not only elements, but also apps with Polymer. Uh, really, the considerations for how you flow data through a simple reusable element versus a complex app that has a lot of structured data are actually very different. Uh, and the other thing is that you know, unidirectional data flow as popularized by the React ecosystem is really kind of taking the world over, and I think there's some good reasons for that. Um, and so really the, the main takeaway from my talk was that if you're building an app with Polymer, uh, especially of any complexity, you really ought to be thinking seriously about uh, taking a unidirectional data approach. And so for, for folks who uh, have, have never done anything like that or, aren't, or maybe don't know a lot about it, um, is there a good like, library or some place where they could, where they could get started to, to learn about some of those patterns and how to apply them in their applications? Yeah, I would actually recommend starting with Redux. It's actually sort of become arguably the, the dominant library for doing that. Um, and uh, there's actually a really nice Polymer binding for Redux called Polymer Redux. Um, and uh, you know the two work really well together. It's really easy to get started. And uh, the Redux docs, by the way, are also great for just conceptually getting what the whole thing is all about. OK, cool. So um, so if, if you could have folks go do like like one thing, go, go check out one thing after they're done watching this video, what would that be? Uh, well, I am going to put uh, some files up on GitHub in the next few days. Uh, I did a bunch of explorations, so I took an app that Kevin Schaaf wrote for last year's Polymer Summit, a chat app, um, and it was just the perfect size. It was complex enough to be interesting, but small enough that I could mess around with a lot of different versions of it. So I found some interesting stuff. I'm going to put those files up where other people can look at it and play with them too. Um, so if you go to you know github.com slash Gray Norton, uh, I think I called it paper uh, I don't remember what I called it, but there's there's only one repo there that could be it. We'll we'll drop a link in the the show notes with the the actual link to that repo afterwards. Uh, so one more question too, which is uh, so you are the nor'easter polymon, and uh, I just want to know what is what is it like being your own polymon, right? You've been captured a few times now. How's that been going? I have. It's a little a little frightening, a little overwhelming at first to be swarmed by people, but I actually I take a little bit of pride in the fact that I'm hard to catch. I mean, people seem to, you know have a hard time successfully scanning me. And you know, I take that to me, and I'm, a, I'm an excellent polymon. Great. Thank you so much for, for being with us today. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, we're going to keep doing these videos. We're going to keep reporting live from Polymer Summit. So definitely uh, stay here on the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm Rob. Again, this is Gray. And uh, thank you for watching. Stay with us. See you.